Hello, everybody. My name is Billy Connolly. David Goholy. Paul Costa. Anton Gilger. Kathy Pavuda. We set out to complete a research project here at the Governor School of Engineering Technology. The name of our project is Smart Clothes and Smartphones. The idea was to combine a small computing platform called Arduino LilyPad and a wearable piece of clothing in order to accomplish a task. Through our endeavors, we created Safe Bike, a jacket and app combination that allowed bikers to be more safe. The conflict between cyclists and automobile drivers has always been a problem. Confusion and failure to anticipate the actions of fellow motorists has cost many lives. Moreover, the percentage of toll fatalities involving cyclists has risen in recent years. This is a dangerous trend that needs to be dealt with. There are two main reasons for this trend. Firstly, the number of automobiles has increased drastically over the past decade. Secondly, due to the recent uh, green movement, Many motors have opted for more eco-friendly and sustainable modes of transportation, such as biking. Not only has the percentage increased over the past couple of years, but today, as you can see from the second diagram, most accidents occur from 4 p.m. to midnight. In fact, well over 50% of bicycle accidents occur at night. And this is a problem that we want to solve. So, how did we attempt to solve this? Well, thanks to the versatility of the Arduino platform and the efficacy of LEDs at night, we decided to create a jacket with turn signals, brake lights, and interfaces with an iPhone. The LilyPad is a subset of the main Arduino brand. The LilyPad and all of its LilyPad compatible components are specifically designed to be sewn into clothing and connected with conductive thread in place of wires. All of our LilyPad compatible components are 100% machine washable, which are used inside the jacket. So it is now time for us to begin working on the jacket and program all the necessary components. Here on this slide is a layout of the jacket and its corresponding circuitry. As you can see, Yellow LEDs were used for the turn signals, and red LEDs were used for the brake light. The, the turn signals were operated using on-off switches, while a momentary push button was used to control the brake light. These two purple circles correspond to the two Arduino lily pads we used on our jacket. As you can see, the lower one is the one that is connected to the iPhone. And situated at the very bottom is a temperature sensor, which outputs data to the iPhone in order for it to produce a temperature bar graph display. One of the major problems we encountered when sewing our jacket were electrical shorts. In fact, we burned quite a few holes in the jacket during the testing place. <laughs> this is a magnified image of the lily pad. There are two different types of lily pad. The lily pad normal and the lily pad simple. The um, lily pad normal has more ports, but it does not have the battery connector as seen as the white square on the lily pad simple. We ended up using the lily pad simple so we could use our lithium polymer batteries in order to power the jacket. However, because the LilyPad Simple has fewer ports, we needed to use two in order to fit in the full functionality of the jacket. So, why do we need this jacket? Well, conventional hand signals are really inconvenient. We can't see them from far away. Most drivers don't even know what they mean. <laughs> also, when a biker uses hand signals, they take their hands off the handlebars, and if they want to do a preemptive signal, they hold it there for a long time, which is an unsafe action. Another problem is night biking. Not only we got to see a biker a few or a couple feet away, but we see their hand signals at all. So how does our jacket help this? Well, not only are the LEDs bright, but they're also easy to use. There are two flip switches located near the wrist of the jacket, which allow the biker to use the turn signals without removing his hands from the handlebars. Furthermore, we added a brake light. This is indispensable to biker safety, as previously, bikers had no easy, easily recognizable way of indicating that they were braking, and many rear-end collisions resulted. Furthermore, thanks to the combination of reflective tape on our jacket and the LEDs, our jacket is able to be seen from 150 meters away, which allows even a car traveling at 60 miles an hour an 8 second warning period to either stop or move out of the way. Given the fact that I had the most experience with mobile development, I was tasked with creating the iPhone application. <coughs> there are two main ways to connect the iPhone to the Arduino, through Bluetooth or a wired serial connection, found at the bottom of the phone. Um, this decision was rather easy because Apple does not expose Bluetooth connectivity to developers, so we had to go with the wired connection through the Red Park serial TTL cable. Uh, this allows us to send temperature data, unlock, and lock commands across the cable rather easily. Some of the software we used was Xcode, Apple's IDE of choice, integrated development environment. This allowed us to code to test the application quickly and in an effective manner. Another piece of software we used was Fireworks, a vector graphics suite, which we used to create the logo, which you saw in the first slide, and various buttons. Paula also used Zara to create the icon on the upper left. So now I'm going to do a live demo of the application. Unfortunately, the iPhone can't connect to the display, so I'm going to have to use the iPhone simulator, which has some limitations. Firstly, it's going to have to simulate as if it's plugged into the Arduino, but it's actually not because there's no way to plug it in.
in a real life uh, demo with the actual iPhone application, it would work just fine. So you see the uh, main menu, you type in your four digit passcode. Uh, you can choose GPS, which is a very familiar view to all iPhone users. So you can see where you are, where you're going, various things like that. For this simulator, it thinks we're in California because it's made by Apple, but in the actual iPhone application, it would know we're in New Jersey. The temperature graph is another interesting feature. It shows the past nine values recorded from the sensor in an interactive and visual form. For this example, we're generating random values, but in the actual iPhone application, it would be streaming temperature data. So now back to DJ to tell you about the process of making the projectors. Being a team of all guys, it was necessary for us to actually learn how to sew in order to make the <laughs> However, there are two main types of stitching which we found indispensable in the jacket, the back stitch and the straight stitch. The back stitch is when the thread loops back over itself, making it more flexible and less susceptible to tearing. However, because the thread's not insulated and it's looping over itself, it makes it more susceptible to shorts. Therefore, we only use it on the high, on the, um, high risk areas such as the elbows where the user is flexing and stretching the thread. Also, the other type of sewing that we used was the straight stitch. This is the more common stitch. It's faster, easier to use, and it uses half the amount of conductive thread. Also, since it's either located on the top of the fabric or the bottom of the fabric, you can cross threads without insulating. This was indispensable in the more uh, congested areas around the lily pad because we had a lot of inputs and outputs going at the same time. Using conductive thread in and of itself was a problem. Conductive thread is pretty much really thin wire that frays really easily. Um, it is also non-insulated, so if any two points of conductive thread touch, the entire jacket shorts. However, we found some very simple solutions to these problems. A drop of acetone or nail polish remover on the frays would adhere them to itself so the jacket could be re -sewn. Also, in the danger areas, we insulated it with black nail polish. So it coated the wires and it, made, it actually hid them from sight. However, this created another problem because it made the wires much more frail and stiff. And on a few occasions, we had to resell. We used many lily pad specific components in the making of the jacket. For example, the LED and the temperature sensor. The LED was used for the brake lights and turn signals, but the temperature sensor is a bit more interesting. It has a sensing range of negative 40 to 125 degrees Celsius, and it sends that data to the iPhone to make a bar graph. We actually had some problems with insulation for erotic gradient body heat from the user. So we used some styrofoam found in a recycled cup of noodles from our teammate, Matthew. <laughs> Ultimately, we used on-off switches to control our turn signals. These switches behave pretty much the same way as momentary push buttons, except they came with the added benefit of lasting for the duration of the biker's turn. This way, the biker would always know whether or not he was turning. Momentary push buttons on the other hand were reserved for the brake lights. This was because the brake lights did not need to be held on for an extended period of time. By using a separate switch to control the brake lights, a biker wearing our jacket could simultaneously flash the turn signals and the brake light. With further research, there are a lot of ways in which we could expand upon our project. One of the things we wanted to have was a heart rate monitor. This could be used for both experimental studies and just for a biker's own personal use. Another thing that we tried to have was accelerometer. The one we used actually was too insensitive, but if we did use a proper one, what it would do was detect deceleration automatically, and it would turn on the brake cuts without any user input. However, easily our most promising idea would be that of a community-based weather application. Pairing the real-time temperature data with the, uh, from the jacket with the GPS coordinates from the iPhone application, SafeBike app users would be able to tell the accurate and updated temperature anywhere in the world where the jackets were in use. This would create a more accurate and interactive weather experience. Uh, so without further ado, we will give you a live demo of the jacket. We would also like to acknowledge the following donors and people, all of whom are in this particular project. Specifically, uh, Jeff O, our mentor, and Tara Nealon, our RTA. Hazard lights. <laughs> 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 